Hi everybody. So it's time for us to start to talk about the most important equation in quantum mechanics, which is the Schrodinger equation. You can see it right there uh, in all its glory. So a lot of times in textbooks this will just come out on page one. People will say this is the Schrodinger equation and then we start to work with it and derive the consequences. But uh, in this pre-lecture what I want to do is give a little bit of context, try to help a little bit uh, to see where this equation comes from. It's a little bit of a tough task. If you go back to classical mechanics, you can't really derive F equals MA. You know, the fundamental uh, equations, you can't really derive those. You have to start somewhere. It's sort of the same way with the Schrodinger equation. You can't really derive it. But nevertheless, I'm going to try to motivate it um, in a way that might make sense and might make a connection to some of your earlier uh, courses. So to start trying to understand where the Schrodinger equation comes from, we're basically trying to intuitively understand an equation which describes the wave particle duality. So we know that you know, now an electron can be thought of also as a wave. So we have waves and particles. That's really the heart of quantum mechanics. So, so in order to get started with this, let's go back to a wave that we understand well classically, and that's light. So we're going to start with the light. And that is known classically. You don't need quantum mechanics for that. And it, it obeys the wave equation. So the classical wave equation is the following. Partial differential equation, d squared y dt squared is equal to c squared d squared y dx squared. And y is a function of x and t. Okay. c is the speed of light. This describes any classical wave. It could be a wave on a string, for example, and then y would be describing the displacement. You know, if this is the string, maybe the wave on the string looks something like this. This would be y, this would be x. And then maybe this would travel along with some speed, uh, v times t. So y is basically telling you this displacement of the string as a function of x and t. If you're talking about an electromagnetic wave, this would be the electric field as a function of x and t. So any classical wave would obey this wave equation. So the solutions of this wave equation are traveling waves which move with speed c. In your earlier physics courses, you might be familiar with the traveling sinusoidal wave kx minus omega t is a solution of the classical wave equation. You could also put a sign here. So both of those are solutions. And because we now know that trigonometric functions can be written in terms of complex exponentials, let's just work with a traveling wave traveling to the right, in the positive x direction. I'm just going to write it in terms of complex exponentials, i k x minus omega t. Because of Euler's formula, I can trade complex exponentials for trigonometric functions. OK, so this is the solution to the wave equation. And maybe I should make some definitions here. So k is sometimes called the wave number, 2 pi over lambda. Lambda is the wavelength. And omega is uh, 2 pi times 2 pi over the period, which is 2 pi times the frequency. Now. Uh, for a photon, we're talking about light now, so we know that photons have E is equal to H nu. That's what Einstein told us from the photoelectric effect. And we also know that E is equal to P times C for photons. So let's try to combine this into this solution here for this traveling wave. So let's start with our traveling wave solution. So our goal is to be to write this in terms of energy and momentum. So let's start with k. k is 2 pi over lambda, like we said. And we know that there's this thing called the de Broglie wavelength, which lambda is h over p. So I can remove lambda in favor of p. p is momentum. So let's substitute that in here. 2 pi over h times p. p is momentum. OK, h is Planck's constant. So h over 2 pi is h bar. So I can write k is just p divided by h bar. Okay. Now we're going to do a similar thing for omega. 
So omega was 2 pi times the frequency, right? And the frequency is e divided by h, according to over here. So 2 pi e over h. And again, h over 2 pi is h bar. So this will be e over h bar. So let's combine these together. We can get y of x and t. In terms of energy and momentum, is some amplitude, e to the i. And then instead of k, I will write p over h bar. And then instead of omega, I will write et over h bar. So let's write it one more time. OK, so I didn't really do anything here. I just removed k and omega in terms of energy and momentum for light. Okay, So this describes a traveling light wave uh, in terms of its energy and momentum as a function of x and t. And my claim was that this was a solution to the classical wave equation, which is d squared y dt squared is equal to c squared d squared y dx squared. Let's double check that. So let's make sure that this is a solution to that classical wave equation. So if I take two derivatives with respect to t, d squared y dt squared, what happens? Uh, every time I take a derivative, I get a factor of e minus i e over h bar. Because when I take the derivative of the exponential, it becomes the exponential again. And then I have to take the chain rule. I have to take the derivative with respect to time of the exponent there. And so I will get minus i e over h bar squared, because I take two derivatives, times y. So in other words, every time I take a derivative, I get the thing back again, multiplied by this, which is the derivative of the numerator with respect to time. And what if I take derivative with respect to x? Um, now I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, which is here in the exponent. So I will get i p over h bar squared because of two derivatives times y. Let's check what happens if I plug that in here. So I'm trying to see, to prove that this is a solution to that wave equation. So on the left side, I get minus i e over h bar squared times y is equal to c squared. And on the right side, I've got i p over h bar squared times y. There's a bunch of cancellations here, so the y's cancel, uh, the h bars cancel, uh, the i's cancel. And what do I have left here is e is equal to pc. e squared is equal to p squared times c squared, which we know is true for light. Right? We have it right here. e is equal to p times c. OK, so take a step back. What did I assume? I assumed this form for a traveling wave. I wrote it in terms of energy and momentum. I checked that it satisfies this classical wave equation. And it does, provided E is equal to P times C, which is true for light. So in fact, this is a solution to the classical wave equation. OK, okay now let's try to go through these steps again. And we're, now we're going to move towards quantum mechanics. Again, quantum mechanics, we're thinking of an electron or some particle which has some wave-like behavior. Right? So it's, not, it's both a particle and a wave. It's not going to satisfy this because an electron is not a wave classically. It's only when we think about quantum physics that it becomes wave. So our question is, we know that the wavy particle, the electron, which has both wave and particle properties, doesn't satisfy this. The question is, what's, what equation does it satisfy? So there's going to be some modifications. First of all, it won't satisfy this equation. We want to know what equation it does satisfy. And these equations won't also, also won't apply for the particle. So for example, for the particle, let's say for a particle, the energy classically would be 1 half mv squared plus a potential energy V. So capital V will be the potential energy. And if I write that in terms of energy and momentum, 
Uh, instead of v, I can use p squared over 2m plus v. So instead of E equals to PC, I have this, right? Capital V is potential energy. So what we're going to try to do is let's assume that this is still the right way to describe the traveling wave. So we're going to assume that the form of the solution is the same traveling wave in, tr in the same form of energy and momentum. And this is basically Schrodinger's guess or Schrodinger's insight. So let's keep this the same. But now instead of having E equals to PC, we have E is P squared over 2M. We need some kind of differential equation, which this particle will satisfy. Again, let's see what happens if I take the derivative here. So if I take dy dt, let's say, I get, every time I take a derivative, I get minus I E over H bar times Y, right? So this is the derivative with respect to t, to t brings down a factor of minus i e over h bar. So instead of e, I can write e in terms of dy dt and y. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me solve this for e. Now what else shows up in this equation is p squared. Okay? p I get by taking derivatives of x. So let's do d squared y dx squared. We did this once before, but let's just go ahead and do it again. Every time I take a derivative, I get i over h bar times p squared times y. So, so every derivative gives me i p over h bar, and I'm taking two derivatives here, so I get two of those. What is this? This is minus, i squared is minus 1, p squared over h bar squared times y. So I can solve this for p squared. We know our wavy particle has to satisfy this. So what is that in terms of derivatives? What partial differential equation is it solving? So let me now plug in what is e and p squared into this equation. So we want to write this equation here in terms of the partial derivatives, which are up there. So e is h bar over minus i dy dt times 1 over y. p squared over 2m. So p squared is this. I need to divide by 2m plus uh, v. So I assumed this, trying to reproduce the relationship between energy and momentum for a particle. And then I took my plane wave solution and wrote down energy and momentum squared. Let's multiply both sides by y. So let's multiply this side by y and this side by y. And then these y's will cancel. And let's write out what we have. OK, so 1 over minus i, that's equal to i. So on the left side, I've got i h bar dy dt. On the right side, when I distribute this y through, it cancels there. I have minus h bar squared over 2m, d squared y dx squared, plus v, the potential energy, v, times y. This is a Schrodinger equation. Okay? Um, we use the variable y as a function of x and t, but um, when you're talking about quantum mechanics, typically we replace, instead of y, we use the capital Greek letter psi as a function of x and t. So if I replace the y with the psi, so there you have it, out comes this equation, which is the Schrodinger equation. Let me try to recap a little bit. So we took the fact that we know what the solution for a plane wave, a traveling plane wave is for light. We took the, took the form of that solution, and we wrote it in terms of energy and momentum. Light has E equals to PC. So when we include that with our plane wave, we find that it solves the classical wave equation. Particles don't have E equals to PC. They have E equals to P squared over 2M plus the potential energy. When I include that information plus my plane wave solution, I find that my plane wave solution satisfies this equation, which is the Schrodinger equation. 
So it's a sort of the new version of the wave equation for a particle, a massive particle of mass m, which has some wave-like behavior. Okay, so here we have it. Here we have the Schrodinger equation. We've kind of motivated where it comes from. It's the differential equation that is solved by some kind of particle which has a wave-like nature to it. And we have to do some work yet to figure out exactly what that psi means. The most surprising thing here is the fact that there's an i on the left-hand side. So this is a complex differential equation. It involves complex numbers, even though what we're describing lives in the real world. So that is really, really surprising. And we have to do some thinking about how do we get from this, which is a complex function, to something which we measure in the real world, which of course all of our measurements involve real numbers. So we'll pick it up there. Thanks all for your attention, and uh, bye for now.